Hey girlies! In today's video we follow Carl as he goes into witness protection and gains a new identity. Enjoy the video. From the outside Carl looked like a regular guy in his thirties. He had a nice car, a beautiful house in the suburbs. He had girlfriends over the years, but he could never settle or make it work long term. When people asked about his job Carl would reply, I'm an accountant for a large firm. However, Carl was no ordinary accountant. He was an accountant for one of the largest international crime networks in the world. He had been working for the organisation for years. Carl was making bank working for this organisation. The best part was he didn't have to get his hands dirty. It was pretty much like any other desk job. Only the pay was much better. For the longest time, his paycheck was the only thing Carl cared about. He knew the dark secrets of the organisation he worked for. Carl didn't know, but FBI had been on his case for the past two years. The investigation was being led by a courageous young detective. Detective Alicia Walker had a personal vendetta against the organisation Carl worked for. As a young woman, she had been trafficked and abused. Now, as a senior detective, she made sure criminals like Carl faced justice. Sometimes, however, Alicia had to work with some of criminals to set up sting operations and gain valuable intel. This usually meant witness protection and plea deals, but Alicia made sure that everybody received justice. For her, it was personal closure. Detective Alicia's team already had enough dirt on Carl to lock him up for a long, long time. However, Alicia's goals were more ambitious. She didn't want some lowly accountant. She was after the head of the Hydra. To achieve this, she had to cut a deal with Carl. As an accountant had valuable secret information about the organisation. When Alicia's team approached Carl, Carl wasn't immediately receptive to the idea, but she was persuasive. Carl sat in the dimly lit room, his heart pounding with a mixture of fear and anticipation. He glanced nervously at Detective Alicia Walker, who sat across from him, her expression unreadable. So, Carl, Alicia began, her voice steady and commanding, let's start from the beginning. Tell me everything you know about the organisation. Taking a deep breath, Carl began to recount his involvement with the crime network, detailing the inner workings of the organisation, its hierarchy and its illicit operations. Alicia listened intently, her gaze never leaving his face as she absorbed every word he uttered. She could sense the fear and uncertainty emanating from him, but she also saw a flicker of remorse in his eyes, a glimmer of hope for a fresh start. As Carl finished his testimony, Alicia leaned back in her chair, a thoughtful expression crossing her features. Thank you, Carl. You've been incredibly helpful, she said, her voice softening slightly. Carl nodded, relief flooding through him at her words. He knew that his cooperation came with a heavy price, but it was a price. Now, Alicia continued, her tone businesslike once more, we'll need to get you into witness protection and provide you with a new identity. You'll have to leave your old life behind and start anew. When Alicia's team placed him in a safe house, Carl had no idea what road lied ahead. Alicia's team had left a box in his bedroom. The box contained a box of pills and his new ID. However, there was a problem. The ID had a woman's name and picture on it. Carl called Alicia in a hurry. He was sure there must have been a mistake. When Alicia told him that there was no mistake, that was his new ID. Carl didn't want to believe her. How could he pass as a woman? He was a six-foot-two, hairy, masculine man. Alicia let out a laugh and said, Take the pills regularly and you will be shocked. Carl interjected, saying that this wasn't in the agreement, but Alicia was quick to shut that down. I told you we would give you a new ID, said Alicia. I didn't say we would give you the identity you wanted. You can always refuse, of course, she continued, but I am sure you have heard the stories of what the organisation does to snitches. Trust me, you would need more than stitches. Carl's heart sank as Alicia's words sank in. He had been prepared to leave behind his old life, but he hadn't expected to become someone entirely different. The idea of taking those pills and transforming into a woman seemed surreal, absurd even. Yet as he looked at the ID in his hands, bearing the name and face of a stranger, he knew that he had no choice. Refusing was not an option. 
not if he wanted to stay alive. With a heavy sigh, Carl resigned himself to his fate. He knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges and uncertainties, but he also knew that he had to do whatever it took to survive. Taking a deep breath, he reached for the box of pills and stared at it for a long moment, his mind racing with a whirlwind of emotions. Finally, with a sense of grim determination, he popped open the lid and swallowed the first pill. Days turned into weeks, and Carl faithfully followed the regimen laid out for him by Alicia's team. Slowly but surely, he began to feel the effects of the pills taking hold, his body undergoing a transformation unlike anything he had ever experienced before. At first it was subtle, a softening of his features, a lightening of his voice, but as time went on, the changes became more pronounced, more undeniable. His muscles began to shrink, his skin grew smoother and his hair started to thin. And then one day, as he looked into the mirror, he saw her staring back at him, a woman with his own eyes, his own smile, but with a beauty and grace that he had never known before. Just a few short months ago, he was a muscular, hairy man. Now his hard features had given way to his new feminine form. Her bust had grown to a healthy size. Her frame had thinned out, making her bust look even bigger. Her lips had grown plum. Her skin was softer and smoother. Alicia had brought her a new wardrobe, makeup supplies. She had even hired a professional makeup artist and stylist to teach Carla the ropes. And as she walked out of the safe house and into the world, she did so not as Carl, the disgraced accountant, but as Carla. After she left the safe house, Carla was told she was not allowed to be an accountant anymore. Alicia had told her it would draw too much attention, that it was an unnecessary risk. Carla didn't have any other employable skills besides accounting, nothing that would pay her well anyways. And unfortunately, the plea deal had only let her keep her freedom. She was given hefty fees and had to sell her assets. This was truly a new beginning for Carla with no house, no money and no networking. To get started, Carla started applying for secretarial jobs. The interviews were tougher than she had thought. The questions weren't heavy in math or any important skills. The interviews barely tested any skills. She was mostly judged on her demeanour. As a man, Carl was not very talkative or cheery. However, as a woman, she was expected to be bubbly and smiling all the time. After her tenth interview, she was just sick and tired of being ogled. Every male interviewer, every manager, had been relentlessly drooping as they gazed at her feminine figure. Was this what she was like as a man? Carl had been accused of misogyny by ex-girlfriends and co-workers before. I guess it took becoming a woman to understand where they were coming from. Finally, after 15 interviews, as Carla was just about ready to give up, she had received a job offer. It was an executive secretary position for a large financial services company. Despite the pay not being stellar compared to what Carla was used to in her old life, she was ecstatic. She could finally start making money again and start standing on her own feet. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow us on other social media. Enjoy your girly day.